Hi everybody, it's Kevin Esty from Stamping Just for Fun, your independent stamping up demonstrator on the east coast of Canada in Nova Scotia. And today we're going to use a couple of products from the new holiday catalog. And the first one comes on page 13 and it is the perfectly plaid uh, suite and sorry, wrapped in plaid suite. The Perfectly Plaid is the stamp set, and it's a lovely stamp set. It's got uh, a couple of different tree patterns in it. This one is a distinctive stamp. Uh, this one is a two-part stamp. This can be uh, colors that go into all the little loops in the tree, or you can use it just on its own. And there's a plaid stamp. There's some pine cones. Uh, this is another distinctive one. And there's some really great sentiments uh, included with that. As part of this suite, there is also this wonderful uh, tree punch. And if you buy the stamp set and the punch together in the bundle, you can save 10% off of whatever price it is in your area. And so that's what I'm going to work with today, is the stamp set, the punch. I also am going to use some of the paper. Now this is a wonderful uh, set of uh, designer series paper bring it in here and show you. It is a 6x6 six six paper. Um, some people don't like the 6x6 six six paper, but uh, what I really like about the packages of 6x6 six six paper is that instead of getting two full sheets, each of only six different double-sided designs, with the 6x6 six six paper, you get 12 different designs. Um, there's really only one full sheet each, so you get four squares of this, four squares of this, instead of eight, if you cut up a regular pack, but you get 12 different designs, and of course there's 12 back sides as well. This particular paper has a lovely gold foil accent on one side of every sheet, and the other side is uh, a, a more plain um, lots of red, lots of green. Okay, so traditional Christmas colors, some non-traditional Christmas colors with the uh, Knight of Navy and, um, uh, let me see, yeah, there's Knight of Navy here in this one as well. So we're going to use a little bit of the paper uh, along with that. And we'll get started here. This particular set of cards that I'm going to do is, go. I called cards three ways. I wanted to show a very basic card, an intermediate card, and a more advanced card, um, for lack of a better term. Um, really, what I want to do is show you how, if you just purchased the stamp set, if that's all you purchased was the stamp set, you can still make a lot of cards with this. If you bought the bundle, you can do a little bit more. If you've got Christmas paper left over from another time, or any kind of a plaid paper uh, that works well with this, uh, then you can do even more. So I'm going to show you three different types of cards that we can do with this set. The first one's going to be very, very simple. I'm using a Whisper White uh, thick cardstock uh, base, and I've cut it in half. So I have a standard card size uh, scored in the middle, and I'm going to do a tall card. And I'm going to use this uh, loopy, loopy stamp, for lack of a better term. And I'm going to use the North Pole Delivery Sentiment. And I'm going to do it in a non-traditional Christmas color. I'm going to use Fresh Fig. Any color looks great on white. But I particularly like to do, uh, you know, colors that aren't necessarily traditional. Matte. This is a photopolymer stamp set, and photopolymer stamps stamp more crisp if you do them with the mat. So I'm going to put the tree right in the middle, and then in the fresh fig again, I'm going to do North Pole Delivery. Okay, that's the stamping done. Very straightforward and simple. Now, we're going to add one little trick to this. I'm going to pull in my trimmer. We're actually going to trim 
off on the front just a half of an inch of that outside edge. Why would you want to do that? Now my card looks like it's off center. Well, what we're going to do, fold and score. And I'm going to take a strip of that plaid paper and I'm going to glue it on the inside edge. And we're going to see that through the front. And that's how I've introduced the plaid into my card. So this is still a plaid card. So we're just going to put a little bit of liquid glue down my strip. And my strip is a little longer because I want to be able to trim it off nice and close to that edge. I'm having a hard time seeing that there. So it's white on white. I'm going to put it on something dark so I can see it. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to use my snips and I'm just going to snip that off right close to the edge like that. There we go. Okay. That is a very simple basic card. White cardstock, whatever color of ink you want to use. Um, like I said, I used fresh fig. You could do it in red, you could do it in green, you could do it in blue, you could do it in whatever you want. Okay. Now I'm going to take that one more step up if you happen to have the trio punch you can take those two front corners and round them and it just adds a little bit of a nice effect to the corner okay that's card number one done now card number two we're going to step it up a little bit again I've got a Whisper White card base, standard size, it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored down the middle. I've got another piece of Whisper White that is just a quarter of an inch smaller. So that measures four by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna use that as a mat on the front. We're gonna bump that up on dimensionals. I took a two inch strip off of one of those six by six squares of the plaid. I punched a tree out of one end of it, and the other piece I kept, because on the inside of my card, I'm just gonna make, I'm not sure how tall I want it to be yet. I have to think about that. Uh, I'm just gonna put a strip to decorate the inside a little bit. Okay, so to start, I'm going to take my matte piece and I'm going to use an oval die, stitch die. I'm going to bring in the big shot. I had this set up to do an embossing folder, so I'm just going to set this up. I'm going to put the, so we're going to do the, the card tall, and I want the oval sort of down here in the corner. But I'm going to turn it this way on my, Big shot. There we are. And we're just going to run that through. Oop. Get the way on me here. There we go. Done with the big shot. Okay. Keep that piece for another project another time. Then we're going to stamp. And I'm going to use, because this has got a lot of uh, navy in it and it's dark, but it does also have the um, shaded spruce green. I'm going to use a shaded spruce ink pad. Bring my little mat back in. And from that set, I think I'm going to use the Merry Christmas. Um, you can use whatever sentiment you like, but because... I want to balance out my oval. I'm going to put this up in the corner here like this. And I think that's going to balance that out just perfect. Grab a block. Okay. Put that on there. And we're just oh, not getting... There we are. Okay, there, my 
my stamp was being fussy today. Merry Christmas, lovely. Close that up. Some dimensionals. And I'm just going to put them in each corner like that. And then maybe I don't want my oval to collapse. So I think I will put, I'll use a little piece there and maybe another one there. Okay. I'll keep this because we're white on white. I want this so you can see what we're doing. off. It's Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada and it's a beautiful fall day outside. The trees are changing every color of orange and gold and red. We're getting ready to have turkey dinner. So I'm just going to center this. Pop it up like that. Just adds a little bit of dimension. And if you haven't guessed it yet, I'm just going to take that tree, put a little bit of liquid glue on it, and in the hole he goes. There we are. So he's kind of, he's a framed tree. And then on the inside, in... I'll do it in green again. I did green on the front. I don't want to introduce another color here. Uh, I think I want... Yeah. May this special season be wrapped in love and joy. I like that sentiment for the inside of a card. We're going to get that. And I just want to look and see if I put that there. I think I want about half of that, so I'm going to cut maybe a one-inch strip off of this. Let's just see what one inch looks like. That'll give me another one or one and a half inch strip for another card. Yeah, I like that. That's going to look perfect. So we can actually stick that down now. love the gold accents on this paper. Now, I did cut that to the width of the card, but it's overhanging just a little bit because if you cut it to exactly the four and a quarter and go too close to your fold, your card will buckle. So you have to come just away from the fold a little bit. Then let's grab that sentiment that and we're going to put that right in here now i always do my sentiments up a little bit higher because i like to write in my cards when i give them to people so i always write a message inside so there we go and we'll fold that one up now and score it with the bone folder paper stuck to me and we have card number two done so we used the punch the paper and the stamp set with this so we've gone up just a little bit okay now we're going to do a third card and we're really going to step it up with this one this will be the more advanced card and I have a variety of pieces already laid out here and I've started again with a whisper white card base but this time I'm doing it um, as a vertical open card so this is, again, it's still the same eight and a half by five and a quarter scored in the middle, but I'm going to orient it this way. I have a card base of Mary Merlot, which is just uh, an eighth of an inch smaller. So this is five and three eighths by three and seven eighths. <laughs> Eights. I think, no, have I got that? I don't have that right. Just a second. When you're doing things in eights, it gets it gets more interesting. 
it is five and three eighths, and I think I went uh, uh, too small to the other side. It is four and an eighth, okay? So an eighth less than what would be a standard card front. So we're going to do a mat like that. Then I had originally worked with this piece of plaid, but I'm not sure if I want to do that one, or I looked in the package after, and there's one that's done on the diagonal. And I'm thinking I like the diagonal one maybe better, and it's got a little more red in it. But this is what I thought I would do. I've got a three-inch circle. I want to put that plaid. I want to put the circle. I punched a whole bunch of different trees. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you could do with, with the trees. And I'm just going to sort of layer three trees in there. And this is going over here, sorry. And then I'm going to do a little sentiment strip here and pop that up on dimensionals. But I think, I think I like this one. So, we'll cut a piece of that. So we're going to start with this. We are going to glue this down to our card front. This piece was cut at two inches wide. So again, this is a six inch strip. I'm just gonna take a two inch piece off of it. And once, oh yes, I did cut it down to my mat size. So normally your card front is five and a half. We're going one eighth of an inch smaller. And that should match my Red mat, yes it does. Okay, so let's glue that down. I'm just gonna leave about a half of an inch at the bottom. I like the color to show at the bottom. You could, of course, always just push it right to the bottom, but Kind of through the middle of my car. I really like that diagonal. I think that diagonal looks great. Okay, then uh, just had to stop and think for a second if I wanted to pop that up on dimensionals, but I don't. I'm going to dimensional up the trees, and I don't like to do too many layers with dimensionals because then it gets too thick to go through the mail for a stamp. So I'm only going to do one layer of dimensionals and just going to sort of figure out where I want to do my trees. Yes, okay, so I'm going to glue those two trees down. Last one we are going to pop up on dimensionals, but I'm going to do my sentiment first because what I'm going to do is tuck it under my third tree so that it sticks out from the side. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball that to start with. I want about an inch, so I want my sentiment here, and we're going to do something a little different with the sentiment. I'm going to use both real red and shaded spruce. I'm going to use the hoping that your busy year comes together in Christmas cheer. And we're going to do it in two colors. This takes a little bit of practice to do. Uh, I did it earlier on some scrap paper. I tested it out and figured out the best way to make it work. 
And so I want the top part to be green and I want the Christmas cheer to be red. And I'm going to sit down to do this because I want to be nice and close so I can see through my block and see where I'm touching my ink pad. And this isn't hard, it just takes a little bit of patience. I'm going to use the corner of my ink pad. And I'm just going to tap across my letters with the corner. I have to be real careful right here. The I in the Christmas comes very close to the M, but then once we're past that, we're good. And I'm just continuing to tap along. And then again, when I get here, the word in is very close to the cheer, but I'm just being careful. Okay, perfect. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the real red ink pad. And I'm just doing it from the opposite direction, and I'm going to ink up my... Christmas cheer. And again, I just have to be careful when I get to the dot in the eye that I don't touch my green. Everything else is far enough away. There we go. And I want to be about an inch away from the edge. Just missed the tiny corner of the in. That's okay. We will touch that up with a stamp and write marker. Uh, it just needs a little, just a tiny little line. We're really good. So that's all set. That's going to tuck underneath my other tree. And I'll probably be able to trim, yeah, be able to trim a little bit more off of that. And I'm just going to trim the right side. Off nice and straight and I can take a little bit more off here so I think what we ended up with is yeah three and a half inches just just about when I was doing my rough measurements that was right about where I thought I wanted it to be so we're gonna do a tree here and we're gonna tuck that in there and I am going to glue on here like this and I'm going to use my grid paper to line this up so that it at least looks straight perfect and then we're going to put the whole thing up on some dimensionals Just like that. Voila. So we'll call that the more complex advanced curd. So there are the three. Easy or simple, just stamped and a piece of paper glued to. This one includes a little bit of die cutting and the punch. If you don't have oval dies and can't do die cutting, you could just um, stick the tree onto the top layer and still bump it up with dimensionals just to give it some depth if you want. Or you could stamp the tree on the front, make a tag and pop that up. You could pop the tree up. Uh, there's lots of different things you could do there. And then our more advanced card with uh, a little bit of extra punching and whatnot. Uh, that's cards three ways. Now, we're gonna do another set in the catalog. On page 27 is another set 
that has uh, a stamp set. It is the Mary Moose stamp set. And Mr. Moose also comes with a punch, which is wonderful. It's a fantastic set. And again, there is a 10% off discount off the price in your area. In Canada, both of these uh, bundles, the punch and the stamp set, are $41.25, which is an excellent price for a punch and a full stamp set. And there's lots of fun stuff in the stamp set. You can give your moose a scarf, a hat, um, you can even color them in solid so that you don't have to color them if you only have white paper. Um, you can, uh, there's a little raccoon character here, there's some Christmas boxes, there's a belt, there's snow that you can put in the sky, there's moose footprints that you can put on the ground. So we're really going to use this stamp set well. The first card is going to be really, really simple. You're just, you're going to like this. This is a pack of foil edged cards and envelopes. It is in the annual catalog. Uh, there are... Uh, 40, it says, I think it's, why does it say 40? Well, it does say 40. I thought there was 20 cards and 20 envelopes. So yeah, I guess that would be 40 pieces altogether. Anyway, they're beautiful cards and beautiful envelopes and they, you can get them in gold or silver. And so I thought, let's do a gold card and we're going to use a sentiment from this stamp set, um, the happiest of holidays, I think. It, no, do you know what? Just because I already have it mounted, I want to use the Merry Christmas from this one. I want a larger sentiment, and I'm going to show you how you don't have to have a stamp set to work with this. This card is going to use only the punch and a foil card, okay? So we're gonna go real simple with this one. I am going to pull out a Sahara Sand ink pad, and Sahara Sand will take on the look of roughly gold ink if you don't have one of the new gold ink pads. When it dries, it will mimic sort of a dry gold. So stamp, Merry Christmas, and then I've pulled out a piece of my gold foil paper. Now this is sort of a matte gold, it matches the gold here, and I'm going to punch a moose. There he goes, he's an acrobatic moose. And we're going to take Mr. Moose. And we're going to glue them down. Now you could pop them up on dimensionals if you want. But for this one, I'm just going simple, simple. And Mr. Moose is going to go right here on the front. And I'm making his legs straight so that he doesn't look like he's walking up a hill. No, I don't want to fingerprint up my foil, so... Pat him down from the, the back. There we go. Fold and burnish the fold. Voila! Simple card done. Merry Christmas. You can put a sentiment on the inside. You got the foil lined envelope to go with it. We'd whip off a couple of dozen of those in no time at all. That's number one. Number two. Again, we're going to start with a Whisper White card base, same as the previous three that I did. Eight and a half, five and a half tall, scored down the middle. We're going to do it in uh, this orientation. No, we are doing it this orientation. I had to look for a second. I have a crumb cake uh, mat, sorry, lost myself there for just a second. Uh, that is uh, an eighth of an inch smaller than the card front size. And I have another little piece that is one and a half inches wide and three inches tall. And we're going to make a little flag out of that. 
I have another matte piece that I cut to four. No, sorry, it is three and seven eighths by one, two, three, four, five and an eighth. So we're going to have a second mat on the front like this. We're going to have our little flag strip here. And we're going to stamp a moose. So just want to sort of position things so that I can determine where the moose is going to go. And we're going to use the two moose stamps so that we can color them in. Because we're stamping on white, um, I just, I don't want a white albino moose with an outline. I want a colored moose. Now you can also, and we'll do it in the third card, stamp this moose stamp on brown paper and then punch them out and you'll end up with a, with a moose in color. So I'm going to get both of these out. Be careful we don't rip his antlers or his legs off. So there's the solid moose. And there's the outline. A couple blocks. Mr. Solid Moose there. Mr. Outline Moose. Yeah, that'll be just perfect. So I just wanted to see where my moose was going to go. I'll get our pad. And I'm going to start with the solid one. And we're going to do that in crumb cake. This was crumb cake paper that I used for my mats, my flag. So I'm going to use crumb cake for the fill-in of my mouse. Okay. He's going to go... Lovely. All right, and that will lighten up a little bit as it dries. Then I'm going to pull out soft suede. And eyeball this as best as I can. This might be where Stamparatus would be really handy to have, but I'm usually pretty lucky. There we are. Okay. Missed by a little bit. It looks like he's been watercolored in. I like that look. Okay. It almost gives him a 3D pop up off the page. I'm going to keep that handy for a moment because we're going to stamp our sentiment on our banner while we're at it. I want this block. And there are two in here Merry Christmas and enjoy the stillness of the season. And I like them together. So I'm going to see if they will both fit together on the one block. Sometimes they aren't quite tight enough, and so you have to do them separate. But I'm going to see if I can get them both on the same block at the same time. Yes, I think that'll work just fine. I'm just lining this up, trying to get it straight, going to get it as tight as I want and centered. There, just a little. Could fuss with it forever. There. All right. And we're going to do that in the soft suede as well, because it needs to be just a little bit darker on the crumb cake. I want it to be readable, not subtle. And that's going to go right there like that. Voila! Beautiful. Okay. Now, we're also on here. Oh, I had a little bit of ink. This is good because I'm going to stamp a tree over top of that. Just cleaning my fingers. We are going to use the small uh, tree from the stamp set. And we're just going to stamp a little bit of a forest backdrop. And I'm going to do that in Mossy Meadow. And I'm going to do some generational stamping. So one, right over my stain, 
is going to be first generation, second generation. Do I want a third? I'm going to do a third, third generation. Perfect. Little forest, all in one go. So that's all done. Now, I'm going to flag my sentiment strip. And I do not have the flagging punch, so I'm going to cut up the middle. To, if you don't have a flagging punch, this is the way you do it. You cut up the middle to the point where you want your flag to be. Now, you've got a guide to go from your corner. And if you meet in exactly the same spot on the other side, your angles will be the same. Okay? I'm not worried about that. So this is going to go on here. Okay, so now it's time to assemble. So we're going to put our first matte layer on. Beautiful. Second matte layer on. Sentiment flag. And just want to introduce a little bit of sparkle, so I'm going to get three little silver sequins. And I'm going to go one there, one there, and one there. Fold. There we are. Okay. And you can do whatever you like on the inside for a sentiment. Uh, I like to use the little raccoon guy right here and, uh, you know, maybe the happiest of holidays or something on the inside. You can finish yours off any way you like. Okay, that's two. Number three. This one's going to introduce a little bit of color. So. I have done half a sheet, but I have cut it long this time. So this is the full 11 inches, four and a quarter tall, scored down the middle. So it's going to be a wide card that opens wide. I have a scrap of soft suede that we're going to punch Mr. Moose out of. So he's going to be colored in already. I have a matte piece for the front that is four by five and a quarter, and I have a second matte piece for the inside that is also four by five and a quarter, or five and a quarter by four if we're going left to right. I have a little strip of that diagonal plaid that I'm going to use on the front. So what we're going to do is this, just add a little bit of color to it, and I will cut that off with my scissors. And we're going to do all of our stamping in here. And I have a little scrap for a sentiment. Okay, so we're going to start with stamping. And I'm going to do Mr. Moose so that he has some time to dry. And we're going to do him in soft suede again. And I want the outline moose. And I'm just going to stamp him right there like that. Good. Moose done. Moose is just going to go to the side here for a minute. Then I want my front mat and I want the large tree. Big 
block, large tree, and then I want my small tree. And we're going to make a little bit of a forest here. And I also want a scrap of paper. And I'm going to do some stamping off, I think, with my large tree. I'm going to use Mossy Meadow for the trees, because Mossy Meadow and Soft Suede go well together. I just want to see. I do... Yeah, it's too dark. So I want the second generation of that, and I want it right there like that. Perfect. Okay, one large tree, second generation stamping in Mossy Meadow. Now, we need a little forest. And I want it up a little bit. I want, no, I'm going to do it in the middle. I don't like to go dark to light as I go left. So my second one is going to go here. My third one's going to go here. There, just gives it a little variety. I didn't want to go dark, light, lighter. Okay. Now, in that stamp set, there's some snow, and it's just nine little dots on a block. So I want a tiny little block. Here's my tiny little block, and I want the little snow. And my strip is going to go here at the top and take up the first half inch, so I don't have to worry about being too close to the top. But I want to make my snow look like it's falling down from the sky. So I'm going to use Smoky Slate. And I'm just going to go... Just turning it a little bit as I go. Maybe I'll put some higher and some lower. On the edge here, a little couple over the edge here. There we go. That will dry lighter as it goes. Then I'm going to my strip on like so let that dry for a second I want sorry my sentiment we're gonna do the Merry Christmas sentiment again and that is on that was on block with the other one. Okay. And I'm going to do that in, since we're using a Knight of Navy card base, I'm going to do it in Knight of Navy. Navy was hiding on me. Okay. And I'm going to do that down towards one corner. Which way do I want to do it? I'm going to do it in this corner. Because I am going to trim it and flag it. So there's Merry Christmas. That's all my stamping done. Trimmer back in. Perfect. I'm going to use the same technique I used before to flag it. I'm just going to cut in in the middle where I want my point of my flag to be. There we 
there. Now we can trim the edge off of this. And we can get the punch. And we can punch Mr. Moose. Get your legs in there. This moose punch is a little bit fussy. He, you got to line up his four legs, his nose, his two horns, his tail. So it does does take a little bit to get him in the right spot. That's why I like doing the gold one. Okay, sentiment's going to go there. Mr. Moose is going to go here on dimensionals. We're going to adhere this to our card front to start. Let me put my inside mat in first. Okay. We're going to take this assembled piece, and this is going to go on the front. strips in half so that I can get some skinny little ones just especially for doing little things like the moose in his antlers in his nose in his belly and then a couple on the back of my sentiment like that Christmas is going to go right here, and oh, the joys of peeling dimensionals. And my moose is just going to be walking along through the woods. There we are. So there's our simple, intermediate, and deluxe moose cart. <laughs> and I'm not sure which way I really like the moose. Um, you know, doing that uh, second layer uh, stamp with the color, yeah, it's a little hard to line it up. Uh, this, you know, you don't have to try to line the stamp up, but I, I like them both. Um, if you ran this paper through uh, maybe the subtle embossing folder, it would give some texture to the mousse. Uh, you could do the same thing here. Um, this uh, gold foil goes through the um, hammered copper embossing folder that comes with the uh, brightly gleaming set is just amazing anyway there we are three more cards cards three ways i hope you enjoyed this i hope that you uh, have an opportunity to try out these stamp sets and these great punches they are fantastic and uh, that you uh, can create some of these on your own okay until i see you next time have a great day